So I thought I'd film this one today. Uh, this is a 2011 Kia Sorento and the ignition lock cylinder is stuck. So um, they come in like this, this assembly here. Let's see here, oh yeah. Um, let me get it out of the bag. So <clears throat> it's got the ignition switch there. It's got the immobilizer and there's the cylinder itself. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that can be replaced separately. Um, this job, there's not a whole lot of service information on it, but let me show you what I'm dealing with here. This car is a mess, by the way. I wish people wouldn't leave me nasty messes that they've already been messing with and just grime everywhere. But anyway, so there's where it lives, down in there. It's got those brake off bolts so you can't just unbolt it. Um, now, if I could get this steering column shroud off, the, the lower shroud, I could get to everything a lot easier. This would, it would be very easy. But in order to do that, you have to take the airbag out. Um, you have to take the steering wheel completely off. I mean, it's not huge task, but it's, it's just, not something I, something I want to do if I can get away from it. And uh, you got to take both these multifunction switches off. It even says to uh, take the U joint for the steering, col steering column off and all this stuff. So I'm going to try a shortcut. And I thought I'd make this video in case it worked. Maybe it'll help somebody here. Those break off bolts. I'm going to get this chisel in between there or up here. Wherever I can, I'm gonna try to just straight break those off. Cause the new, the new one has threads in it for, I can get a regular bolt in there. It's literally the only thing holding it on. There's a couple connectors, those two, mobilizer, ignition switch, and, uh, and then the illumination light, and there, there's the switch. But, so, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to see if I can save some of us some time. So upon further reflection, not wanting to break anything, um, I decided just to get my chisel like that onto that break off bolt there and just give it a couple taps and sure enough, it's, it's coming out. So it's just gonna thread out like a normal bolt, just slower. I'll let you know if I can squeeze this sucker out of there. And success. It was actually a hell of a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. A couple taps and it just, I was able to reach my hand in there and take that little break off bolt out very easily. So, hopefully this will save you guys some time. Like I said, we'll see if it works. Success. So a couple things I'll note. Um, there's some pretty important wiring harnesses that are going down there uh, for your um, airbag and well, all these multifunction switches, but especially the airbag. You want to be really careful with all those harnesses. Um, one of them has a little clip that goes right into there. So you just want to pull that off and it's a tight squeeze. You kind of have to put some pressure on that lower shroud. Just be careful, don't break it. And just kind of take your time and wiggle it out. And it will come out. So let's get the new one in and start this baby up. Thought I'd show how this one actually failed. You can see here. So you can see the key just won't turn this little locking pin up here it's supposed to retract as well so it's just seized up in there uh, probably had nothing to do with the actual ignition switch just the tumbler the mechanism inside there okay so success it's in now just walk you through how I got to that point because I didn't film that. 
take that plastic covering off and underneath there is this little plate. I haven't secured it yet. Just put the bolts in, thought I'd film this real quick. Uh, there's just a couple other miscellaneous little plastic pieces. Uh, that little plastic uh, dash covering there, there's two screws on the side here and then a little clip you gotta pop it free on. And then um, uh, two down there, two Phillips that go into it from there. I'll show it from the other angle once I get it in. Okay, and then this DLC, it just pops right into there. There's just little tabs that pops right out. So it's really hard to film this. But basically you grab that and it just pops right into there. And then this piece goes up here like that. And that's where these little screws I was talking about hold it on. So if you can't get it off after you take these two screws out, there's one Phillips there and one there, and then two right here. <clears throat> you won't be able to see those without taking this little side panel off. It just pops right off. And then that's the fuse cover right there. That is the top shroud and it just snaps in there. There's no screws or anything. This little piece, I assume it goes right there. Well, it goes right there. I'm, I think it just pops right in. It was already taken out when I had the, when I got the vehicle. So I'll finagle it in there. It looks like it just kind of, these little rubber seals just go right up in there. There's also one screw. Looks like maybe an eight millimeter or Phillips. And that goes up through there into that ignition switch assembly we just replaced and that holds it in place just ensures it doesn't vibrate around so you want to put that back in there it goes through the bottom shroud there all right so got the jumper on there i still got to put that little little ring in there this giving me trouble go that battery is really low so quick tip on these batteries well any battery uh, if you let it sit in temperatures like we've been having here it's been it's been getting down to about nine at night sometimes colder when I got the vehicle it was actually getting into the negatives so chances of this battery coming back are probably slim um, I suggest if you're going to leave your car unattended and cold like that for extended periods of time, you put a battery charger with a tender on it and make sure that it stays up because I think this is a fairly new battery and it's probably got a couple dead cells in it. We'll see. I'll let it run for a while, maybe put it on the charger for a little bit and hopefully it'll come back. Well, there you have it, uh, 2011 Kia Sorento back on the road. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there's always more than one way to do something. Uh, I just saved myself a massive amount of time from taking the steering column apart. Um, would I recommend that? Maybe not. If you if you have not done this job before or you don't have any uh, a lot of experience with stuff like this, I would go by the book just because you're not going to be sure what you're breaking or pulling on or um, anything like that. Like I mentioned, those those harnesses in there, you got to be really careful for um, the shrouds themselves. You don't want to break those, crack those, because anything you break, you got to replace, and that's just money out of your pocket. You want to avoid that, like the plague. So we were able to get it fixed, and hopefully this helps somebody. Uh, like, subscribe, hit that bell. See you next time.